Tibini, uh, and I'm here to present uh, uh, my action plan, uh, which is based uh, on the course that we've just begun. Uh, I've decided to identify uh, three goals, and I'll speak to these goals as I go along. Uh, my first goal is to grow into a Wesleyan leader. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm a member of the Pilgrim Wesleyan Church of Zambia, uh, and as such, uh, I have the privilege of serving in various capacities, uh, both within the local church and as well as at the national level. Uh, within the local church, I am a director of Christian education, and at the national level, I serve in, on the National Board of Administration, uh, the NBA, as it is popularly referred to, and it's a governing body uh, for the Pilgrim Wesleyan Church in Zambia. I've identified some of the barriers that I may face uh, in my quest to grow as a Wesleyan leader, and one of them is that uh, my colleagues may not be familiar with what is meant by or what is involved in the leadership the Wesleyan way. So I'll share my experiences as we go along with the course. Uh, regarding leadership the Wesleyan way. Uh, I'm fortunate to already acquired a very good text uh, by Aaron Perry and Brian Eastley uh, regarding leadership in the Wesleyan way. And my intention ultimately is to practice leadership the Wesleyan way as long as I live. My second goal uh, is to hone preaching and uh, teaching skills. I've already pointed out that uh, currently I'm serving uh, the local church as director of Christian education, uh, and I'm responsible primarily uh, for the Sunday school, uh, for three streams, the children, the youth, as well as the adult classes. I'm also a member uh, of the pastoral team. As a matter of fact, I'm a, a licensed minister, and from time to time I'm actually called upon to, to preach. Barriers that I see is that uh, for the time being, not really a barrier, but a limitation. Uh, I'm not a full-time minister of the gospel, and as a consequence, my preaching as well as my teaching is essentially on an ad hoc basis. Uh, resources to overcome the barriers, uh, fortunately, during the subsistence of my MDV program, I've had the privilege to study exegesis of proclamation uh, or styled as BL. BL 631, and also Christian uh, Proclamation, PROC 631. Uh, these have grounded me in, in preaching especially, uh, and as I've already pointed out, uh, from time to time, uh, I'm called upon to preach, and I also regularly uh, teach in the Sunday school. I've listed the uh, litany of books, textbooks, that I have in my possession, and I'll use these as my resources uh, going forward. Timeline, I intend to be a Sunday school teacher at a minimum and preach as long as I'm called upon to do so. Uh, the last goal that, uh, uh, I have uh, identified uh, is becoming an ethical leader. Uh, granted the various uh, leadership roles that are performed uh, within and outside church. Uh, outside church, I'm a business person. I'm also an arbitrator. I'm actually a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators based in London. And I'm also a mediator. And as a mediator, I both train as well as practice mediation. So I desire to be ethical as I perform this particular role. The barrier I see now is that my knowledge of ethical leadership uh, is limited. I'm familiar about ethics, Christian ethics in general, but I think I want to hone my skills insofar as ethical leadership is concerned. So my take uh, of this subject is that uh, I need through this course to enhance uh, my knowledge and practice of ethical leadership. Happily, uh, there is a text that has been recommended uh, and I have already procured one. Uh, ethical leadership, uh, the quest for character, civility, and community by 
water eel flakas. Uh, it is my intention to use this uh, resource as effectively and regularly as possible uh, to hone in my skills in ethical uh, leadership. My intention, obviously, in terms of timeline, is to be an ethical leader for all time to come. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs>